So my PhD work was uh, on um, quantum coherence and interference effects in atomic systems and the applications in quantum optics. During the time we were exploring how we can manipulate the properties of atomic systems, of optical systems, by uh, creating coherent superposition states and using them for uh, applications like lasers without inversion. So this was in a group of Marlon Scully at Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas, very interesting place. I finished my PhD in 1998. First of all, I'm still working with atoms and also other atom-like systems. And uh, I view uh, this kind of interplay between uh, quantum optics and also kind of modern photonics as a very uh, fruitful playground uh, in which the two disciplines learn from each other and influence each other. And um, uh, certainly, you know, I, so my own interest in nanophotonics came um, from uh, kind of uh, ideas to try basically to do atomic physics better in, a, in a new ways, to create new functionality, uh, uh, to create new quantum optical devices, to explore new quantum optical effects, to improve control over interactions between light and atoms. And um, for uh, those, uh, kind of applications for, for doing science in these areas. Uh, it turns out that nanophotonic devices uh, offer pretty unique possibilities. And uh, that what motivated me to think about nanophotonics, to think about plasmonics, to think about photonic crystals. And uh, I uh, really see that, you know, already now, uh, this interplay between quantum optics and, you know, nanophotonics really opens completely new frontiers. And I think we are now only at the beginning of, we are just tipped, you know, the iceberg, you know, so see the top of the iceberg in terms of the things which are about to come. Not exactly the day, but you know, it is, uh, I mean, definitely. So, as when I was a, when I was a graduate student, when I was going to uh, optics, quantum optics, and photonics conferences, I realized at the time that you know there is a kind of a community being developed, which is you know really kind of looking how to kind of explore the possibilities of really isolating individual mm -hmm. uh, particles, individual uh, molecules, and um, it became clear with me over time that, you know, basically, you know, borrowing, you know, some ideas from this community and also supplementing it with mm -hmm. kind of, uh, let's say, the ideas for coherent control, uh, which originate from the field of quantum optics, uh, is a very promising new direction. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, this is the kind of stuff which we are exploring today, right? And I think by doing that, not only we uh, basically just borrowing ideas from the field of nanophotonics and use them, for example, for building quantum computers. But also, uh, we realized that some of the kind of techniques which we developed in quantum optics and quantum science uh, can now influence and now are now influencing uh, the nanophotonics field with new applications. Uh, such as, for example, nanoscale sensing emerging uh, from this work. So my research is now in a field uh, which can be perhaps called quantum science or quantum science and technology. And basically in this field, what we are trying to do is we are trying to use the control over, coherent control over individual uh, quanta, individual particles, individual atoms, individual atom-like systems to build more and more uh, complicated uh, quantum systems. And uh, you know, one example of that is you know, building quantum computers, but there is much more. Uh, for example, one other uh, direction that I mentioned involves applications of these systems to build novel types of sensors. And you know, these uh, sensors you know, potentially allow one to 
measure things and you know do things which you know just about a few years ago were thought to be completely uh, impossible and uh, that's you know that's the kind of stuff which we are doing. So I am uh, uh, fascinated by the idea of uh, breaking a diffraction limit, of confining the light down to sub-wavelength dimension. And what really comes to mind is the possibility of really molding, of using this, you know, interact, you know, kind of confinement to really mold the interaction between light and and atoms, individual atoms in particular. And that's where, at least in my kind of world, that's where nanophotonics really offers unique new uh, possibilities. So I think the key challenge from my point of view is really kind of uh, extending uh, the techniques for kind of confi light confinement and interactions uh, with atoms to kind of fully coherent and fully reproducible domain. So basically, uh, what, you know, in my research, what we are trying to do now is we are trying to basically confront the mutually kind of contradictory challenge, challenges of, you know, of basically controllability and scalability. So on one hand, you know, we would like to really be able to control uh, atoms and photons at the level down to the individual quanta, but at the same time we would like to have a larger systems, kind of practical systems associated with them. So it's basically these are two contradictory requirements where, you know, nanophotonics can really play the very important role, but, you know, basically, you know, what we would like to do is really, you know, be able to squeeze systems down to sub-wavelength dimensions while without losing the control and without losing kind of reproducibility such that we can potentially, you know, have hundreds, thousands of millions of the systems coupled to each other or used for applications. From my point of view, nanophotonics is still a very young field, you know, and I think the, the best is still ahead. So I think, we, as I said, we just tipped, uh, we just, you know, see the top of the iceberg and there's a lot to come.